Yet we have all experienced harsh, harsh weather. Or a huge snowstorm. We look out and see the world covered in white and know there is a task of snow removal ahead of us. During this time, we often end up making some sort of comfort food. Chocolate chip cookies or macaroni and cheese. Something that's familiar, tastes good, easy to make, and will give us strength to go on in the midst of the storm that surrounds us. But let's say that the, the event is even bigger. Somehow, tragedy has come to us, and something has occurred that just takes all the energy out of us, and our world completely changes. When we've been traumatized, we tend to find a place or an activity which is familiar, and we gravitate to that place where we know healing, stability, and rightness can be restored. For me, Cape May Point is the one of those places. There's something about being close to the ocean, being in a place where I feel free, being in a place where happy memories fill the air. As I've grown older, I realize that there is a balm there, a healing power. It's, you, I just have to drive over that big bridge and realize that I'm on the island. And restoration begins. It's a place where I've sailed, I've enjoyed myself, I felt accepted, I knew what would happen. It's simply a holy place for me. If something really bad occurs, I long to be there. In the Gospel today, we are still in the recovery period for Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, and the rest. And they've all become very good friends in their time with Jesus. They've experienced so many things in this past week. They enjoyed Passover together as a group. They had their feet washed by Jesus. They saw the drama when Judas, one of their friends, leaves abruptly. They experienced the body, of, body and blood of Christ for the first time at that table. They knew it was something different. They went to pray on the Mount of Olives as was their custom. They watched Jesus get arrested. They've experienced the pain and confusion that that arrest brought with it. They experienced the walk of the cross, walk to the cross, and Jesus hanging there. They were glad to see that he was given a proper burial. They experienced the women saying that he is risen they experienced him alive and seeing the scars of crucifixion. And after all of that happened, all of those emotions that they experienced during that time, they decided to go fishing. It's no surprise that they decided to go fishing. Most of their lives have been spent on the, on the boats on the Sea of Galilee. For them, it's a place that makes sense, provides stability and healing. Once again, they fish all night and catch nothing. Even though this even though that they've caught nothing, this activity is healing for them. This allows the frustration and the pain to be worked out in some familiar tasks. Fishing is a relief for them being on the water, having the breeze blow on them, feeling the boat move across the water. All of it is healing for them. The dawn occurs, the sun poking out over the water, and it must have been just one of those moments that provides beauty for them, a calming moment. I imagine the sky turning yellow, then orange, then blue. The water reflecting the light, the glimmer of the sun bouncing off of the waves and the ripples in the water. The birds are flying, and life seems to come back through that dawn. 
and the men would have taken it all in and enjoyed the beauty before them. Jesus is on the beach and calls to them. Once again, he gives them fishing instructions. Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you'll have to find some. By now, they know to listen to that voice. They know that following Jesus brings adventure, filling their lives with satisfaction and abundance. This time is no different. They do as they have been told and fill their nets with a huge catch. Peter realizes that, that it is Jesus, and he jumps into the water and goes into the beach. He continues to be ready to follow Jesus. He instinctively knows that Jesus brings a healing pressure, presence. And in his enthusiasm, he jumps into the water and goes to goes to Jesus. The others bring the boat in and they, and they drag this enormous catch onto the beach. Jesus already has made a fire and is cooking breakfast. Their comfort food? Fish. He's making their breakfast after they have worked on so hard all night long. Jesus is having a meal with them. It's a sign of him being alive. He could eat. He breaks bread and fish with them. And as he eats, to, as he eats, eat, to, as they eat together, confidence, confidence grows in them that Jesus is risen. Once again, they see the scars of crucifixion. Once again, they see him moving and working among them. Once again, they feel that abundant presence which is accompanying them. Healing calm is theirs. They know that they are with Jesus. Just like they were walking in the countryside and listening to him preaching as they learned how to interact with others. For Peter, the time together turns even more intimate. Jesus speaks directly to him. Three times he asks Peter if he loves him. Three times Peter says yes. Peter doesn't quite know why he's being singled out. Or maybe he does. He remember the last time he stood around a charcoal fire with an opportunity to express his love and failed. That awful night when Jesus was arrested, he stood in the courtyard and denied even knowing him three times. Here he is again at another charcoal fire, being asked to express his love. And this time, this time he does. And when he does, he is given a glimpse of what is ahead for him. What is ahead for Peter? Death on his own cross. Most importantly, Jesus asks him to follow me. This is the invitation which Peter, which was given to Peter when they met. Come, Peter. Come, all of you, and follow me. Jesus has shown them that it's important to be together. He's expressing that following him takes them to an abundant life. What they will experience will be nothing short of amazing. Through Jesus' healing, the comfort, the restoration of wholeness will be found. All this is provided in our lives by following this simple, simple instruction, follow me. All of us have had these times of trauma. All of us have looked for places where we will be comforted and healed. Jesus is assuring us that he will be with us as we go through the trauma and hurtful times. Jesus becomes the place of comfort. Jesus provides that healing touch. When we have been healed of our sorrow and confusion, the response is that we care for the sheep and follow Jesus. We do this by expressing the love we have, which we have been experienced. 
Maybe it's making a meal for someone in need. Perhaps it's just list, sitting and listening to someone tell their story. For sure, it is expressing love and grace to all we encounter. As we do all of that, abundance fills our lives. And Jesus beckons us still. Follow me. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah.